Well, we're on the eve of fall camp for the 2017 Montana State football season. We're talking with second year head coach Jeff Choate. And coach, I know the off season is a time for everybody to kind of recharge their batteries, but a lot of the guys were here over the off season. What is the value of these player run practices as the guys get, come back for fall? Well, I think it's really twofold. Number one is obviously they get to practice their craft. I mean, you can't go out and and, uh, and practice 11 on 11 football just in a pickup game like you might be able to do with a basketball team. Uh, and, and secondly, it's obviously building team chemistry and trust over the course of the summer. The guys that are here consistently are, think, are guys that, that their teammates know they can count on. And that's a huge part of, uh, of, of the sport of football is uh, that accountability piece. Rosters are always changing. It's recruiting is a 365 day a year craft for coaches. But in your time since you took the job on day one compared to right now, how have you seen the roster change to suit your goals for the program? Yeah, well, I, I know the first year we got here, our, our big deal was we had to get longer, you know, taller, rangier body types um, that, you can, that you can develop over time. And I think that was one of the huge things that we had to do was really focus on becoming longer and more athletic. And then in this last recruiting cycle, the 2017 class that's, uh, that will start with us tomorrow, uh, was a speed was a, a huge um, uh, uh, focus for us. And, and so trying to increase our overall athleticism and team speed. But uh, kind of the underlying theme was this concept of what we call the TRC, the right cat, um, was young men that uh, are willing to, to sacrifice for something greater than themselves, the concept of ride for the brand, and uh, really fit Montana State University. A major focus has been the weight room and nutrition. You've implemented a lot of different things to change how business is done in those two areas. How have you seen the players' bodies change and evolve over the last 18 or so months with that? Yeah, well, I think, I think there's two really critical things. I mean, everybody lifts weights, uh, everybody runs, um, but the, the, the edge and, and the advantage that can be created um, by providing, number one, access to proper nutrition, but also education. And so uh, you couple um, the, the fueling station opportunities that our guys have with the opportunity to have a registered dietitian on our staff now. I think the access and the education are the two components that really push those guys forward. And then I think uh, you know, the job that Coach Wilcox and his staff have done through the course of the summer and the buy-in that our players have had, uh, they know the weight room's important because I tell them that on a consistent basis. I mean, that's uh, really the foundation of everything else that we do. The discipline and the structure of our program starts in that weight room. And uh, the time that they spend together training is, 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 I mean, they get more time together in the summer training than we get with them in fall camp. And so if they've done that work, if they've laid that foundation, then we're going to move forward more quickly once we get into training camp. Championships are often built in the off season, and a big piece of that is spring ball. What were some of the bigger things that you made the progress, the most progress on in spring ball that you want to carry into fall camp and continue to grow? Yeah, well, I think one of the things that we really talked about, especially on the offensive side, was to, to really streamline our, our verbiage, our terminology, making it easier for our kids to process the information, which in turn hopefully allow them to play fast. Um, certainly one of the storylines is, is Chris Murray's development as a passer and our ability to be a little bit more diverse on the offensive side of the ball. And so that was a huge focus for us, uh, really you know, charting every throw and making sure that we're in that 65 to 70 percent completion ratio every single practice. And um, if that happens consistently over a long period of time, that product's going to produce itself on the game day in, in game day as well. And so and Chris's maturation as a leader and as a passer and uh, our ability to kind of streamline our offense so we can play fast defensively. You know, looking at a couple of tweaks because we were, you know, we, we felt like we did a really good job of, of being smart about not giving our guys too much defense a year ago. We, were, uh, we, we weren't a heavy blitz team. Uh, we probably max dropped as much as we blitzed. And, uh, and so uh, now we've got the ability with guys that have been in the program for a little bit longer to, to push the envelope a little, find a tweak here or there that's maybe going to help us schematically. You have quite a bit coming back. Your quarterback returns. You have four offensive linemen coming back. The bulk of the wide receiver core. A bunch of guys in the front seven are back, and three safeties return that played significant reps last year. With so much coming back, how might fall camp be a little different this year than it was last year? Well, I just didn't know what we had. I didn't know what the chemistry was like on our team. I didn't know who the tough guys were. I had a pretty good feel for maybe who some of the leaders were. Um, and so some of those guys have left the program. The, you know, JP Flynn's with the Niners right now, and, and Gunner and Chad are gone. And, and so uh, I think I know who some of the guys that are going to emerge that have already started to emerge in our program are. But I think more what we have to focus on now is really digging into the details. A lot of it was big picture stuff a year ago. We're trying to implement the program as a whole. And now I think these guys understand what the expectations are in terms of how we practice and how we treat each other, how we take care of the locker room, all of those things that matter. In a, in a big way and now maybe we can slow things down and really focus on the details of each individual position and uh, the, the difference between winning and losing which sometimes is just 
simply a game of inches. You alluded to the growth and development of your quarterback, Chris Murray. Just from what you saw in the spring and from what you've heard from the offseason work, how much has his game grown and how much has he benefited from working with Denarius McGee? Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head. I mean, I think Denarius has been a huge asset for Chris and for our program and uh, in terms of being able to really just focus on the quarterback position. Um, even before we had a change at coordinator, Dar Denarius was on board with us before uh, Coach Messingham took off to, to North Dakota State. And so the idea was that we would just take a guy and just let him focus on the development of our young quarterback and not have to be the guy that was also focusing on our install for spring or fall camp or, or the big picture of the offense. And so his ability to really hone in on not just Chris, but all of our quarterbacks and what their strengths and weaknesses are and improving them in, on a day to day basis and, uh, and, and really kind of mentoring them off the field has been huge. But I think Chris took the step. I mean, I think he's, he, he, I've seen, uh, I've seen a, um, some great strides in terms of his work ethic, in terms of his level of accountability. Uh, he is now the guy that's rounding guys up and throwing on Saturdays and doing some extra things that you have to do if you want to be a championship program. And I also think Chris is, you know, I mean, he was, you know, probably around 175 pounds when we played Montana last year. We might have listed him as a little bit more, but you know, he's almost 195 pounds now. So that 20 pounds, even though that doesn't sound like a big guy, that's, that's a lot of strength and weight that he's gained. And now you can see him pushing the ball down the field with more, with more authority and, uh, and breaking a tackle here or there and not just relying on his elusiveness. And so uh, I think that continuing development of Chris in terms of his on and off the field demeanor and approach to the game has, uh, has really started to emerge. I know a number of fans will show up for the first handful of practices for fall camp. When they get out there and they're standing on the rail over at the practice fields, what will they be able to notice out of Chris in terms of moving his development as a dual threat quarterback to the next level? Yeah, I think they'll see better accuracy. Uh, I think they'll see more command, uh, both uh, you know, from a leadership perspective, but also a command of the offense as a whole. Uh, I really think that Brian has done a tremendous job of, uh, of putting a, you know, we, we went through all the offensive installs for the first five practices today with me in there. And so that's always an interesting conversation because I bring such a defensive mentality to it. I'm like, well, don't do that because we're going to know you're going to do this. And, and uh, you know, I was very impressed with, with the thought that had gone into uh, how we were going to construct our offense and uh, the challenges that the style will present to defensive coordinators throughout, the, 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 throughout our schedule. Your soul, I guess, to say as a football coach is to run the ball offensively and play physical defensive football. Let's talk about running the ball. You mentioned Chad Newell and Gunnar Brecky are gone. A handful of guys are going to step in and try to fill those spots. What kind of competition might we see when fall camp gets underway at running back? Well, I think it's going to be very interesting because <laughs> depending on exactly what we're doing at the moment, the stylistically, one guy might do it better than another. So we're, we feel like we've got a lot of options. But we do have to have a couple of guys emerge as kind of every down backs. And so, you know, um, you know, a couple of guys that I think I'd keep a really close eye on are kind of some bigger guys. Edward Vander, a transfer. Uh, from uh, from a junior college that actually was a late qualifier, so he's still got four years eligibility. He can, he can redshirt one and, and play three more, which is a, a great asset. But uh, Edwards, uh, you know, six foot one, two hundred and ten pound kid that can run really well and was highly productive, over a thousand yards in production and rushing a year ago at the junior college. And so he's a guy that I think can, because of his 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 physical size, uh, can hold up and play down in and down out. Um, this may be a little bit of a spoiler alert here, but I think we're going to start out Troy Anderson at tailback. And uh, we, we recruited him primarily as a defensive player. Uh, but after you just watch him and what he's able to do with the ball as a ball handler in general, as a quarterback at Beaverhead County High School, as a point guard at Beaverhead County High School, uh, and, and he might be the fastest guy on our roster. And so uh, I think that's a guy to really keep an eye on. And then we kind of have all these guys that are maybe, you know, you got guys like, like Logan Jones who's coming back into the fold and Noah James that can do a lot of different things. You have, um, you know, Jake Roper, who had a really good productive spring that is uh, capable of doing a lot. And then there's some guys that are kind of, I wouldn't say they're one-trick ponies, but they're probably going to be better in one-back sets or they're going to be better out of the backfield like Anthony Pegues or uh, Tyrell Burgess, a young freshman from, uh, from, from the state of Florida. And so there's a lot of options for us back there, and we're excited to see how it comes together. On the defensive side of things, Mac McNeil was just named a preseason All-American by Stats and FCS Football. How did his leadership impact the summer program and the player run practices? Yeah, it's, it's so interesting because Mac is a quiet guy by nature. Um, but he started to assert himself that this, this defense was becoming really probably he and Bryson McCabe's defense. And so I thought, the, the, you know, he's a lead by example guy. He's kind of an old school, down and dirty, tough guy. Um, and what I've noticed at a lot of the young guys, they want his approval. And even if it's just a nod of the head or a pat on the back, that's enough for Mac. 
It's like, you know, kind of being a made man almost, you know, and so, uh, and, and there were times where I would ask questions to our leadership group or to our seniors, and Mac wouldn't hesitate to, to voice his opinion, and that's, I think a, a real a strong sign to me that he's emerged and is more comfortable in that leadership role. What is his role on the field? Because I know you kind of switched him around in the spring, some things changed. Where will he be when fall camp starts? Well, wherever he can cause problems for the offense, I hope. And I think that's one of the great things about Mac. We feel like we can play him at Will Linebacker. We can play him at Sam where he's been really productive for a number of years. But in our nickel packages, he played in the box anyway. And so I think a lot of that probably depends on how guys like Peyton Gilman and Chad Cano and Baloo Chapman, who had a great spring, how he continues to progress in the battle at inside linebacker, where you bring back Josh Hill and you've got Lucas McCarthy, who had a really st strong spring. Um, so that's, we, we have the luxury of knowing that that guy can probably start at two different positions based on who the next best guys are and how that fits into our defense. Last season, the defensive line was decimated by injuries. In the moment, it felt awful. You, it is what it is. You're moving guys around, you're trying to mix and match. But the, on the back end, you build a lot of depth. So going into camp, how is the depth on the defensive line and how might those position battles play out? Yeah, well, you know, I, <laughs> I think it's going to be a really exciting position to watch. Um, I'm biased. I'm an old D-line coach, and so I like watching those guys anyway. But uh, I think about the interior defensive line and uh, the experience that we bring back there, um, the kind of offseason that the young men have had. Um, you know, Brandon Hayashi was a guy that was just kind of started to emerge had an injury, missed a couple weeks, and then played decent down the stretch, but had a great spring. And I think a guy that can really give us a, a lot of quality reps at the nose position. You know, Tucker Yates, who was a war daddy for us and was a big time player through our first five or six games, went through some injuries, had an off season surgery. He's leaner, he's meaner, he's playing really fast right now. I think he's poised to have an excellent junior season. Uh, I, I think uh, we've got some other guys that I think are gonna emerge. We got a, a late signee that we took uh, uh, a young man from, from uh, Euless Trinity, Sam Liotta, that will be here. Uh, you'll notice him when he walks on the field. And so I think those three guys give us kind of that mass and that, 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 uh, that little edge at the nose slash guard or tackle position. Uh, but then you look at a guy like Derek Marks, who by hook or by crook, the guy had to play a ton of football as a freshman last year and was ultra productive. And I think he's just taken that next step. He's a very, very coachable young man. I think has a huge career ahead of him here at Montana State. Chase Benson, who redshirted a year ago, who might be one of the strongest guys in our program and is up to almost 270 pounds. And uh, so those tiny type of guys kind of give you a little bit of edge. But there's another guy, Tyrone Fontenono, who I thought was probably our best D lineman after fall camp last year. Well, he has a, breaks his foot in the Bryant game, doesn't really play after that. And so that's, that's kind of one of those pieces where you're like, okay, hopefully the combination of those guys, that, that being kind of the core coming back can really add some, some, some dynamic play for us. Um, Zach Wright. Who ended up actually being, I think, a third-team all-conference player, and uh, is just another tough, hard-nosed kid that does a great job. And then on the edges, it'll be fun to watch Grant after a year of playing the buck position under his belt and really being able to focus on his body and also the pass rush element that he needs to bring to, for us. And Michael Jobman, a young man that I think has got a huge upside. Kyle Finch had a great off-season, and so there's some of these long guys that we've recruited now that it's their turn to go play. This is a conference, the biggest guy, where everybody throws the ball for a living, unlike a lot of other conferences where everybody runs the ball. So when you're trying to defend the, the pass much more, pass rush is important. So what should fans be looking for in fall camp with regard to the development of the pass rush? Yeah, I think it's going to be one of those deals where do you, do you end up putting a Mac Begnell on the edge a little bit more because that's, that's something that he does have a knack for. Um, does Baloo give us that ability to do that? Uh, do we stand Derek Marks up and play him in some of our Jack or X positions on the edge in our nickel package? And so I think that part of the game has got to improve for us because, you know, one of the things that we talked a lot about was our inability to take the ball away. Um, we, we had some issues obviously holding on to the ball, but it was exacerbated by the fact that we didn't get the ball back on defense. And so that turnover margin, a team working together to create the, the, the turn, eliminate the turnovers and create the takeaways is a huge deciding factor in victory. Well, one of the things that allows you to take the ball away is affecting the quarterback. And so being more efficient, whether we're bringing three, four, or five guys at the quarterback, that's going to in turn make bad decisions for him, whether we're knocking the ball off of him in the pocket or whether he's you know, trying to get the ball out of his hands and makes a bad throw and we get a pick. And so that is going to be a big storyline to watch. And then on the back end, in the secondary, some unproven guys are going to be at the cornerback spots. They'll work their way through it in fall camp. But at safety, you've got Bryson McCabe, as you alluded to. It's one of the guys that's his defense. Kahari Garcia, Braden Conkle, all back who have good reps at safety. What is it going to look like as you guys make your evaluations on the back end? Yeah, well, I think a, a really interesting piece to watch is going to be the nickel spot. Um, 
we probably didn't play as much nickel as we would have liked to a year ago because we didn't feel like we had the guy in the back end. And now I think um, whether that's Kahari that develops there or we can maybe play Bryson there and because we, we feel good about Braden as a post safety and, and you know, Benny Folsom had a great summer. How is he going to push and emerge? Uh, we signed a junior college transfer who actually played corner in, uh, in junior college, but he's going to start out for us as a safety in JoJo Henderson. He's a big, long, rangy guy. So that's going to be, there's going to be some great competition there. And I think, again, one of the things to keep an eye on is, you know, not just who are the two starting safeties, but who's that nickel and how does that allow Ty and the rest of our defensive staff to utilize that package a little bit more efficiently. And then in special teams, you have a slew of guys back who can kick and you get Luke Dally back into the mix. How wide open is it going to be in the kicking competition here? In no, it's going to, I think that's going to be a, a very open competition. Uh, and, uh, you know, coming out of the spring, uh, you know, Gabe, you know, Luke kind of getting a feel for it was interesting because even though he'd been in the program, he hadn't been in our program. Mm -hmm. And so for him to kind of have to figure out, okay, this is how we practice. This is how I manage my body. And we don't kick a whole lot in the spring anyway. We do a lot of fundamental work, but we don't do a lot of full unit kicking work. And so now will be really the first time where those guys kind of get to go head to head and chart the kicks every day and see who's winning that competition. And uh, same thing with Jared and, and, and Luke at, on, on the punting competition. And so I'm excited to see how that goes. I like all three of those guys. I think they all have strong legs. I think they're all competitive and athletic. And uh, an area where I really felt like we were solid but not great a year ago was in the return game. I mean, our numbers were very good, um, but for what my expectation is, I feel like we've got to have the ability to, to, to say, hey, we're going to break a game open a couple of times a year with an explosive return. We talk a lot about the players. The fans are obviously excited for fall camp, but how about you? How about you and the staff? How fired up is everybody just to get the band back together and get out here and hear some popping once yeah. again? Well, you know, you work towards this really, as you said, 365 days. And so when it comes around, uh, there's a little bit of a Christmas feel to it. Um, I may be different. I, uh, <laughs> in the 48 hours before we report, I almost, I kind of go into a funk a little bit. You know, it's like you kind of, all right, take a deep breath because, you know, I've been doing this a little longer than a lot of these other guys. And I know it's a marathon, not a sprint. And, and these, these seasons can be long and demanding. And, uh, you know, you really have to kind of center yourself a little bit. And, but uh, there's really nothing like uh, if you love the game, as weird as this sounds, that means you even love the smell of the locker room. I mean, it's just something about the fall and, and uh, it's, a, it's a special and unique deal. And I think uh, we've got a group of men that are excited to go get it done. Well, it's go time. Tuesday or Wednesday is actually report day for Bobcat football. First practice is on Thursday and it all counts down to Saturday, September 2nd when the season gets started at Washington State. Keep it with us here on MSUBobcats.com for updates all throughout fall camp. With the head coach Jeff Choate, I'm Jay Sanderson.